Most people usually only think of those in office desk positions that have to deal with issues around postural insufficiencies and postural deficits, but that's not the case because the kiteboarding posture is actually one that raises a lot of these very same concerns. For the content of this episode, I simply labeled it bad posture in the kiter, but the clinical classification would be under upper cross syndrome. With this syndrome, you have underactive weak muscles which cross overactive tight muscles simply from postural insufficiencies which perpetuate further symptoms and degrees if left unchecked. In kiteboarding, the pull of the kite through the harness creates a rounding around that imaginary fulcrum and when dealing with the upper extremity it can perpetuate things such as forward head position, rounded shoulders, winging of the scapula, and many other potential injuries that can come directly from bad posture. Most other water sports have the benefit of a rowing motion, which is working the back musculature to strengthen and to offset a lot of these issues that we're dealing with right now, but not kiteboarding. And my concern is that over the next few decades, as kiteboarding gets more time under its belt, that more of these issues are going to come to the surface. That we're gonna see more shoulder injuries, cervical neck issues, as well as other things directly associated with bad posture. I mean, how many kiters have you noticed with a profile that looks like this? I know for me, that is a huge deficit and I'm always having to address bad posture. Gravity already wants to pull us in to this direction and then add on top of that a sport such as kiteboarding, which really doesn't implement good static and dynamic posture and you're out on the water for a prolonged period of time. This leaves us with a need to address our deficiencies and to implement treatment and exercise in order to, at the very least, limit progression, but ultimately to correct it. This video is not fully comprehensive. It is not a prescription for every postural deficit, but it is a general point of reference for some things to be aware of, as well as descriptions of a few stretches and a few exercises that you can implement for addressing upper crust syndrome in the kiter. Let's begin by covering a few stretches to address the overactive tight muscles. Beginning with the suboccipital stretch, interlock your fingers and place them behind your head, but you're not going to pull with your hands, they're just going to rest there. Now bring your chin down towards your chest and you hold. You will feel a stretch in the upper back of your neck if your suboccipital muscles are tight. You can also vary this by rotating your chin some to one side to identify if tightness is more pronounced on one side versus the other. Three sets of 20 to 30 second holds. The levator scapular stretch begins with bringing the same sided arm to reach towards the middle of the back. Hold this position while turning your chin down into the opposite shoulder like you're attempting to look behind you. You can do three sets of 20 to 30 second holds on this one or you can perform a contract relax where you reach your end limit and you actively hold there for five seconds before relaxing and then stretching into your further range. Five contract relax cycles will suffice. Taking an exercise ball and your arm and elbow at 90 degrees Descend with your body until you feel a good stretch across the front of your chest and shoulder. Three sets of 20 to 30 second holds on each side. If that position is too difficult, perform a corner lean with both arms and elbows at 90 degrees with your feet away from the wall and then use your body weight to increase pressure with the stretch. Make sure and keep your head in a neutral position with all of these activities. A slouched kyphotic posture limits thoracic mobility. This activity in a quadruped position increases movement of the thoracic spine. Take the rotation to the end point and hold there briefly before returning to the start position. 20 repetitions each side. You can also have a partner increase your rotation with passive help at the end point if desired. Now let's cover exercises for addressing those underactive, weak and lengthened muscles. Strengthening the cervical flexors is not a common movement and it's also not one that thrilled my wife to demonstrate. She just called it the double chin exercise. I will blot it out now. Okay, that seems like a good compromise. 
With the chin tucked, push through the middle of the back of the head with a static isometric hold for 20 seconds and then relax. Perform this five times. This exercise is to address the forward shift of the head on the neck. Pay attention to this posture throughout your daily activities. You can perform this movement in sitting and standing as well. Just don't start clucking like a chicken. The modified cobra in prone is a great exercise. Begin like you're flying in a squirrel suit. Make sure that your thumbs are rotating as far to the outside as possible, squeezing your shoulder blades together and statically hold that position. Then change to a Y or an overhead position and repeat with the thumbs pointing externally as much as possible. Build up to where you're able to do a two to three minute set total, rest as needed, and again, remember to hold your head in a straight neutral position. With single arm cable rows, pull the cable back with the thumb pointing towards the ceiling and squeeze your shoulder blades at retraction. Perform three sets of 12 to 15, holding a good posture. Here, adding a little dynamic to the same exercise with a drop step. There are many variables that can be performed. I'm sorry, but I just wanted to add some multi-joint movement to this plan. Here, the cable raises overhead. I'm focusing with the lower traps, but I'm also working balance and leg strengthening with a single leg lunge. Make sure and work both sides with three reps of 12 to 15. Another more advanced exercise is on the Smith machine with the concentration on the rhomboids, the muscles between the shoulder blades. But also it addresses core elements within the activity. With the feet on the exercise ball, performing a horizontal pull up and then squeezing the shoulder blades together. Three sets to failure or in the 10 to 20 rep range is a good prescription. Again, this is not a fully comprehensive plan to address upper cross syndrome. It truly is hard to avoid negative postural implications when kiting for prolonged periods of time. What you have to do is you have to be cognizant of your posture when kiting and address with stretching and exercise. Think of different modifications that you can make on the water, such as maybe using a stopper bar on your setup so that your reach doesn't go to the outer limits which then brings the head of your humerus forward out of your glenoid cavity and creates rounded shoulders possibly impingement syndrome in the shoulder as well as forward head and neck and all the implications that can occur there with cervical issues you might notice being able to perform with a better posture when using a seat harness versus a waist harness if there are modifications that you have made to address your bad posture on the water. Please comment. I would love to know your thoughts and ideas on modifications on the water. Reach out to these guys for all your kiteboarding needs. Subscribe. Likes are much appreciated. And comments are always great for input. As for us, we'll see you next time on the water. On the OK Kiteboarder. Okay